And uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Tom Hatton, who will be the next speaker, and we'll go from there. Okay. You all filled up from lunch? Yeah. Now, usually, especially if I come in after lunch, I make everybody stand up. So I'm going to continue that thing and make everybody stand up. Stand up. All right. We got everybody. I'll go row to row. I'm not afraid. We good? Okay. Everybody's hands in the air. Just wave them around a little bit. Okay. Hi. Thanks for saying hi. That was really nice. Okay. Sit down. Okay, good, good. Now let's stand up one more time real fast. All right, good, good. Wait, everybody quick, quick. No, we didn't need to wave this time. Look at you. Hi, I'm Tom. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay, now we can sit down. Now we got our heart rates up a little bit, got the food settled a little bit. I um, want to introduce myself. My name is Tom Hatton. I'm the CEO and founder of Mountainside Fitness Centers and a wishful graduate of ASU. I actually, my story started back in 1990 here at ASU, actually there in Tempe at ASU when I was in the education department. I had no idea I'd be standing here 30 years later talking about owning a health club, certainly, or a gym uh, back in those days, but I did. I was at ASU Junior Education Department. My goal was to be a teacher and a coach. That's what my dad did. And I kind of grew up a teacher's son, coach's son, played baseball. That was my dream growing up, to play professional baseball. I realized very quickly that it wasn't going to happen. Well, not that quickly, but after, you know, a couple years of chasing around after high school, I said, okay, let's go figure out what you want to do. Now, I wake up one morning, dead of summer. I used to paint houses uh, when I wasn't in school. That's how I paid my way uh, through college. And I was painting houses, and one day, it was a hot summer day, uh, right after the semester ended, my junior year, uh, in the summer of my junior year, and I went home, just passed out, woke up the next day, and I had this really weird, clear dream. And I'm not, like, really introspective. I certainly wasn't at the age of 20, 21. I think I was at 22 at the time. And it was really clear. It was, uh, it had me sitting at a front desk of a gym. Now, has anybody ever been around since, you know, the days of the jazzercise and aerobics and all those fun, uh, you know, days, parachute pants. Yes, I had some. Um, the fitness wasn't what it was today, and I certainly didn't even think about it as a, as a business. I, uh, you know, I, I like working out. I didn't think about it as a career or anything like that. But here I was sitting at the front desk looking around, and uh, I felt like I was literally working uh, when I woke up, like I was tired from working. And I could tell you that the, the gym I looked at had gray carpeting, it had white equipment. It had black upholstery. It had um, the, the locker rooms were in the back of the room. Actually, I'm true to form, the club was about the size of this room, the, the whole club. I mean the whole club. We had uh, a group fitness room. We used to call it aerobics back then uh, on the left-hand side and this little child care on the right, which is really kind of unique because back in those days, there wasn't child care really that much, certainly in gyms. Um, unless you went to a big activity center or something like that. So I woke up and I started to talk to my friends and say, hey, I had this really weird dream that I was owning a gym. And I said, that's funny. You know, were you drinking the night before? No, I actually was tired from working. We talked about it. That was in late May, June of 1990. I signed the lease in November of 1990. And we opened in March of 1991. So at the time, I had $2,000 in my pocket. I had a white truck and German Shepherd. That's, that's all I had at the time. I, I went and got a loan for $15,000. My parents co-signed. I got a loan from a family friend for another $15,000 at 15% interest. Yeah, I didn't know what debt was. I figured it out real fast at that point. And from there, tried to figure out how to open the club. Um, we did all the interior build-outs ourselves on the very first club. Uh, my father and I painted. We laid the tile down on carpet. Uh, my roommate and I welded some of the equipment, um, painted it, and so forth, and lo and behold, we got open. So that's the start of it. As we stayed open and got going a little bit, I wanted to grow, and the only way to grow was through real estate, because I was so young and didn't have any real money, 
if I was able to buy real estate, which sounds counterproductive, right? How do you buy uh, real estate if you don't have any money or whatever? Well, I couldn't get a landlord, another landlord to let me go into the center, another center and build a bigger club. So I thought, well, what if I just buy land? So I went and got an SBA loan. And it was about four years after I opened my very first one, I, I got an SBA loan for a million bucks. So that kind of went fast. And I had my first building, and uh, it went from 5,000, which was about the square foot of my very first club, but my first building from the ground up was 18,000. And from there, we were kind of off and running because I would use the real estate. I would sell it after I built the club. We would stay in as the tenant. I would take the equity from that, and I'd go buy another piece of dirt, build another club. Very slow process throughout the years. Um, our story has been interesting because it's really been tied as I learned business as a kid, I was learning fitness at the same time, which is kind of why I ended up here today because it's an evolution. And for me, it was the evolution of learning business in every way, shape, or form you can imagine, certainly as an entrepreneur, but then learning the business, which was fitness, which was really in its infancy stages. It didn't know what it wanted to be. In fact, really, my goal was to be open for a year. I thought if I'm open for a year at this stage, hey, I'm golden. I'm going to get a real job, finish school. That'd be great. In there. And then if it just started to evolve, it, it really did. Um, technology kind of came into play about 10, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, little gyms started to, to go out of business because they, was, they weren't growing into as the world was learning about fitness. And then like today, health. And it became a part of society just along with good nutrition and understanding your, your blood cells and, and those types of things. And throughout the years, as we've grown into a, a bigger fitness company, it's been interesting to see health grow. I mean, say we all know about health. We're talking about it in every way, shape, or form. But really, health has grown. When we first started, fitness was really about the way you looked. We can all remember back in the ads, back in the days, and all those types of uh, stuff for fitness. It was about how do you look? You're going to look better. You're going to lose weight. That's what it built itself on. When fitness became a part of your health, and he started talking about how you feel, do you feel better? Whether you are overweight or underweight, do you feel better and why? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel more alert? Do you have more energy? And that's more about health. How does it affect you inside, not outside? And I think as I looked at it and I was asked to speak here today, I said, it's easy, I could tell my story all day long, that's, that's easy. How to correlate starting a business, certainly here at ISU, starting a fitness business, and then what does it mean to health and today? It's really, I thought about it as I was looking at all the speakers and everything that we're all about today is how it's all coming together now. It's not separated. Somebody was, I was in, doing a podcast earlier and they're asking, what do you think the next evolution in fitness is gonna be? And I said, well, it's already here, but it's a slow moving train uphill, but it's happening. And that is your premiums, your healthcare premiums are gonna cover your health your fitness centers. It's already happening. We've done deals with United Healthcare. We're just gonna announce one with Aetna, uh, Dignity. Like even in the hospitals, like you're gonna see it. We, you're gonna see health clubs, fitness centers in hospitals. It's gonna come all intertwined um, back to your premiums. I think th that's where it's gonna go, not just necessarily going out to the market and saying, hey, do you wanna join my club? It's gonna be a part of your healthcare plan because certain fitness centers are gonna be able to report back. And I think that's the big part today is how are we able to communicate back to your healthcare providers in, in those things to say, hey, we're getting better. We're providing something that's just like your care and physical therapy, or if you went to go get a you know, blood test. We started partnering with Sonora Quest about three years ago, that if you're a Mountainside member, you get your special, your own rates to get your blood testing and your own portal to say, hey, okay, here's your own thing. And it's, it's done through us, uh, and you can release it to us so we can work with you inside the clubs, or you can hold it for your own and just get an advantage as a member because of that to get into Snore Labs and get your testing done. So I thought for, for us that was a real big jump forward in the way we look at fitness, in this case really health uh, today. And I think that was really what I wanted to bring across. I, I could sit here for hours and talk about our story and how we've grown and, and where we are as far as a fitness center in the valley, um, but it's really just about health and what we look at and how when we think about fitness tomorrow, every day 
we think about it as we move forward is how do we integrate more health into fitness? And, and, and that sometimes is an inter interesting question. And it, we have to listen a lot from a lot of sources to make sure that we're hearing everybody. And it's not just about a piece of equipment we buy. It's what we're providing you from ourselves when you come in there. They were asking me earlier, what do you do inside the clubs now? Are you evolving more? Are you doing more equipment? I said, actually, we're de-evolving. You know, people, when they come into fitness centers, they don't <clears throat> necessarily want to go and think about a lot of programs and your treadmills and your ellipticals and those types of things. They want to go up. They want to go down. They want to go fast. They want to go slow. They want to be entertained, right? You want to be connected. Um, and then you want freedom to roam. You don't necessarily want a piece of equipment to have to jump on to move up and back because that doesn't fit everybody. But the ability to roam throughout a facility and to understand what different movements inside the facility that you can do translate outside. If you have kids, if you work, if you bend over a lot, what have you, how do you work those things? Because that's what's really about health. It's not necessarily about the way you look. It's how you function. I'm 51 and a half years old. I started having back problems, lower back problems, about four years ago. And I think about that every time when I go into the club to work out is how do I work to strengthen my lower back so that when I'm out doing the things that I like to do outside of the club or just outside of work, can I do them free of pain? And I think that's the way most people think about it now. And we're still trying to lead that uh, when it comes to fitness and certainly in your health. Um, and I think that's what I really wanted to come across today. I, I, I know I had about 10 minutes uh, before we had our panel, and, and hopefully we'll be a part of a answering any questions for you. But um, I think that's how I was trying to make sure we integrated fitness with the thought and the mentality of health. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. I appreciate all your energy and time. And thanks for standing up and waving. I appreciate that. Thanks again. Yeah. Mike, come on up. <laughs>